Hi guys, welcome to this new video. Today we are gonna do another photo mode overview and it's a big one. I've been waiting four years for this one. So yeah, let's let's go for Black Myth Wukong today. But before we start, I just have a, a small disclaimer to do. Sorry about the shitty quality of my camera here. I have a lot of issues, I don't know. It's okay, I, I, I'll be in a small window in a minute when we are uh, into the game. I plan on playing this game on GeForce Now, but it's not out on GeForce Now just yet. It will be very soon, so maybe by the time you watch this video, it's already out on GeForce Now, so you can play it with the highest quality possible. Um, but right now I'm gonna use my machine and I need to lower a bit some settings, so I won't be playing in ray tracing mode but yeah anyways we are just here to check the photo mode and its features if you don't know me guys my name is shinobi i'm a virtual photographer i do photography but in video games i'm also a photo mode consultant which means that i've worked with different studios indies or triple a studios on their photo mode to make them the best they could and i love to just watch a photo mode take every feature and you know give my my two cents about it how it could have been made better is it enough is it good is it well made is it well implemented that's what we are gonna uh, check out today on black myth wukong let's go So once you get in the game to open the photo mode, there, there is a shortcut. It's the weirdest shortcut I ever seen. So if you use an Xbox controller, it will be this combination of buttons. And if you use a PlayStation controller, it will be R2 plus the middle pad. It's really inconvenient to open in game. Uh, finally, if you're on PC, it will be the P uh, key that will open the photo mode, which is actually the best, the best option. But anyways. So, once you are in the game and you want to open the photo mode while you're moving, for instance, it's not super easy because of this combination of keys, but it's doable, so yeah, uh, whatever. So let's get, let's get into it. Uh, first off, when you open the photo mode, it looks like uh, very simple. I was, uh, I was expecting from what I saw, which was uh, one screenshot and one video showing just that tab, I was expecting a free cam and a good range. The reason why I was expecting this is because nowadays we have a lot of this blueprint Unreal Engine 5 uh, photo modes in games and um, they are not great but they definitely have one good thing is that free cam and a very good range uh, usually. So I was expecting this. There is a good news, there is a bad news. The good news is we are on a free cam indeed. So that's really cool. No problem here. Seems like orbital cam is really a thing of the past now. But the bad news is the range is pretty bad. So that's the maximum range you can get uh, on your camera. Now, it's not absolutely terrible because the field of view uh, is not super distorsive i mean it is if you go lower than this three uh, value that i'm on now but if you combine this and uh, the camera range you can still have some you know like uh, environmental shots that are not too bad but it's definitely not enough it's definitely a shame and a bad point for this photo mode. We need way more, um, way more distance camera, especially for Titan-esque environment and bosses and stuff like this. So come on, come on, that's not enough. But okay, there it is. We have a bad range, good um, camera moves with the crane on the triggers. No problem here. Now, the first step is so the field of view and the roll. So field of view, um, you can go pretty, pretty close. Um, movement camera, you cannot control the speed of the movement. So when you're really close like this, it might be annoying. Give me a sec. Oh. So for instance, for close-ups, uh, portrait and stuff like this, you will be able to go as close as this wait 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 i try to go 
slow. I think that's the closest. Okay, that's good. That's good. You can work with this. So that's the most um, zoom in telefocus field of view. Uh, it's the value is 100 and zero is this one. So it's the widest angle you can get in this game. You can see that the, the distortion exists, of course, but it's not terrible. So I guess you can you can use it for some shots. Now the roll thing. So let me just reset this camera. You can reset the camera position with just the press of the right stick. It does reset the field of view and the roll and the camera position. So roll is actually really good because it's a full 180 degrees uh, left and right. So yeah, really cool here. You can cover every angle you need. Really cool. The, the way the sliders move is also cool. Uh, it doesn't go too fast, too slow. I like it. Uh, I like the way it, it operates. The second tab is depth of field. So depth of field, you can put it off or on. And then you will have two different settings, which are distance and intensity. That's not enough to make a really good uh, usable uh, field of view setting, in my opinion. But, but, but let's see how it behaves actually. Now, let's try a really close up portrait, shall we? And see how it behaves with the depth of field. So distance and intensity, intensity right? So let's put the distance where we want it on the eyes, I guess. So you don't have a guideline or something to show you where the, the depth is. But I mean, I guess you can find it out. And intensity. Okay, so intensity will will also be a smaller aperture. So you will have a much smaller uh, sharp area. Maybe you can see it properly here on the cheek. You have the, um, and uh, maybe on the eyebrow, just right here, it, you, you can see it the best. So it's very small, sharp area. And if you lower the intensity setting, it will widen this sharp area and at the same time make the actual intensity of the blur a bit less strong. So it's not perfect because it will not allow you to have the, the most control over it, but it's not terrible either. I mean, it's easy to use and it behaves pretty good. I mean, I, I think the, the blur is looking pretty okay. I mean, it definitely needs more testing and more situations to 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 see it properly but yeah i think it's okay i think it's okay now you have brightness on the third tab you have the brightness contrast vignette and filter brightness setting is pretty okay i mean it doesn't i mean here obviously it will be completely unbalanced but it doesn't brighten up as a gamma setting like it it's the the case sometimes it really does brighten the, the, the light and you can go pretty dark, not full black. So I don't know why, but you know, no real big complaint here on this one. Contrast as well is pretty okay because it's, you know, it doesn't change too fast. Like Atlas Fallen, for instance, I reviewed the, the, the photo mode the last time. Here you can have a pretty good control on the contrast and probably mixing up with filters and brightness will help you have some cool settings. I, I think you don't need to go too strong on that to have good results. You don't have a button to reset just one setting or one tab as far as I can tell. So that's a bit of a shame. Then you have the vignette uh, that is at 60 per default. So you really need to put it down to zero if you don't want any vignette on your shot. And you can put it up to 100, which is looking like this. Yeah, just too bad it's not on zero by default because it's usually what we need for a shot. But anyways, filters. Filters, you have, I think, eight filters, uh, black and white, uh, vintage black and white, which is more contrasted, uh, fade, which is less contra contrasted, majestic, I like this one, it's kind of a greenish um, 
but the blacks are a bit lifted uh, as well. You have the vibrant, which is more reddish, I, I guess, than actual vibrancy. Um, what was that? Twilight, bold, autumn. Doesn't feel super strong. You also have the filter intensity. It's it's at max here, and that's it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's it. I like the black and white ones, actually. Uh, I think even this one might be interesting. Sort of Kurosawa mode in... Uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what people do with this. But it's cool to have the intensity filters, uh, the intensity going with the filters. Then you have the headgear you can hide or display. I don't have any headgear here, so it, it's the same, but I trust it works properly. The stains on body as well, so I guess it's the blood and maybe dust you can hide or uh, show. I don't have any right now, so yeah, let's hope it works properly. Then you have the frame um, frame tab. So, you know, usual here it's uh, presets of uh, different aspect ratios. You have four of them. Okay, why not? never use this and you have the sticker so sticker uh recently with this blueprint photo mode that we have on uh, unreal engine games it's really bad because it's just nine preset locations and you cannot do much with it this one uh, first of all you have four five different stickers so let's go with this one for instance and you have the full control of the positioning so you can go wherever you want uh, like this as well and you also have the size control which is really needed um, it's the biggest size you can go here and the roll and of course this is much needed as well because you know vertical shots so yeah pretty good here um, well played for this uh, logo thing that I don't use usually, but you know, sometimes it, it does look really good to make a poster material stuff. So yeah, it's okay. And finally, you have an auto save settings tab, so you can put it off or on. And I think it just saves any th settings that you made. So let's try this. So I have the auto save settings on or the reset all settings, which I want. So let's see if I exit. So I do exit and I go back in. Yeah, it's it's all saved. So yeah, this is pretty cool to have the choice of it because I usually like to have, you know, when I work on the scenery, I like to keep the same settings or and this way it helps and it's also cool to be able to put it off if you don't want that so i like this final thing that i want to show is that you have a grid uh it's by pressing triangle on the ps5 um, controller um if you hide this the, the the thing it will it will hide the grid as well but the ui of the the photo mode is not super invasive so i don't really mind it uh, i usually like to have the, the two hiding options separated but it's okay here i guess and what do you have more uh exits that's it so you don't have you don't have a, a key to actually take the shot so i know some people are confused by this sometimes so i guess if you play on console of course you will have your share button or whatever it is on xbox i don't know i don't own an xbox and if you play on on PC, you will have to press the Elf F12 on Steam or whatever you use to capture. I personally use Reshade to capture my shots. Um, and then I choose the location myself. But yeah, I mean, if you just make a print screen, I'm not sure it will be saved uh, anywhere with the, the game things itself. It needs confirmation on that. I'm sorry, I cannot really tell. All right, so that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this uh, overview of this new photo mode. I think it's not too bad. Um, definitely the camera range is a, a shame, but overall it's this type of really simple photo mode that maybe will be helpful for newcomers 
and uh, you know you don't have to th overthink too much of what you do obviously it will limit the creativity of the the most passionate virtual photographers but it's decent it's usable it could be better guys um my name is shinobi i'm a virtual photographer and i invite you to check my x account and my website all the links are in the description i love you i'll see you next time in the meantime keep snapping bye